everybody. I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday. I wanted to go over with you a lesson or several lessons that I learned from my DIY project this week. If you've been following on Facebook, I actually did this overwhelming project of refinishing my kitchen. I spent three times as long, maybe twice as long as I expected at least, and was bruised and had, you could see blisters <laughs> on my hands. I had, I was sore almost everywhere. I was just exhausted at the end of this project. It took five steps instead of the two steps that I originally thought it was going to take to do the refinishing project and required a lot more stooping and bending and laying on the floor and, and reaching up overhead than I expected. So when I got to the end of this project, all the doors were done and I thought, I'll just snap all those doors in place. And I took the very first door. At the end of this week of being completely exhausted from this huge project and it wouldn't fit. And I was on top of the counter reaching in this awkward position to get this cabinet in the corner over the fridge and it would not go. It wouldn't fit in. I thought, I've wasted this whole week. I've done all this work and I've ruined my kitchen and I can't put this up and I'm all alone and I'm like freaking out. I'm like just about to lose it over these kitchen cabinets, not going back into the spots where they were supposed to go in. And I was on the verge of tears, raising my hands toward the ceiling. Why does it have to be so hard? Have you ever been in a place where you've been overwhelmed and stressed? And it might be a little thing. It might be something trivial like kitchen cabinets, or it might be a really big thing in life, which I did feel like you know, in a little bit longer, I, if I had stayed in that place, I would have broken down into tears and then shamed myself later because it's kitchen cabinets and how many people think about worse things and all of that. Um, but these are the things that when it's important to you and you're in the middle of it, no matter what it is, it's where you're at. And we can get that way in all kinds of things, little things, big things. And when you're overwhelmed and you're tired and you're physically, mentally, emotionally exhausted, it doesn't take one just this one more little thing that doesn't work for you to finally get to that point where you say why does it have to be so hard and I've had those other places where I have found why does it have to be so hard over this or that or especially writing things or ministry things or, or things that have to do with your life's purpose things that have to do with family members that you are dealing with or or people that are close to you you can get to that place where you think just why does it have to be so hard? So this might be a small example, but it can reflect a lot of other things in our lives where we get to that place where we say, crying out loud, why does it have to be so hard? So I prayed in that moment, which, you know, I'm crying out, why am I all alone in this? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm not alone because I'm praying God is with me. And that still small voice of the Holy Spirit reminded me that he is with me. I don't have to say, why am I alone? Because I'm never alone with God with me. And then a few minutes later, I decided to just try another cabinet. So I, I take the cabinet that's supposed to go over the stove. I had labeled them. You know, that's the wise thing to do. I had labeled all the cabinets. But this one that goes over the stove didn't want to fit either. Why is it not fitting? And then I look at where it's, where it's laying out, and it's way too big for that space. Surely I didn't mislabel these things. And yet, I took that cabinet just to see, and sure enough, I had mislabeled the highest doors in my kitchen. The fridge ones, the stove ones, were swapped in the way that I had labeled them. So this thing that I had been trying so hard to force in place that was so hard really wasn't meant to fit there at all. And when I finally put it where it was supposed to go, it snapped into place. And boy, did I feel silly. I could have wallowed in shame. I could have 
um, really kicked myself for being stupid about mislabeling them for even getting into such a tizzy over cabinets of all things in life. Um, and yet I was so grateful and I could really just feel like God was with me in that moment because I had taken a moment to pray in my angst. It was a, I'm on the verge of tears kind of prayer, but he was with me and he was right there with me and understood, even though it was not the worst catastrophe anybody had ever felt, he's with me in it because he's with us no matter what we're in. So I learned some things in my life about this experience, not just about cabinets, but about life in general. I need to pray for God to label where things belong in my life, especially the things that belong in the high places. It's his job to tell me what belongs where, and I need to make sure I give him the authority to tell me which things go in the top places in my life. And when things refuse to, to um, fit where I'm trying to push them, then I need to ask God either to equip me with strength that comes from him to do what he's called me to do, or to redirect me because maybe it's not fitting because it's not intended to go there. I'm not meant to do that. So he's faithful to do what is best for me, for his perfect work through me and for me. And then I need to be aware of those catastrophizing thought patterns where I think, oh, I've ruined my kitchen, my whole, everything's ruined. I've wasted my time. Oh, and I've, you know, I've, you know, all of this that we, we tend to do that's a catastrophe. This is the worst thing in the world. That should be my red flag that I'm not thinking clearly if I ever do that. And then I need to realize always I'm never alone because God is always with me. And then another thing I learned is that shame is not from God. I know this from past experience as well, but I really, really experienced being rescued, not just from the circumstances, which, you know, may or may not have worked out, but God rescues me emotionally and spiritually from those kinds of pitfalls every time, even if the circumstances don't work out the way I want. Um, he's not going to let me wallow in shame. He'll redirect me or he will help me live better also um, so that I'm not wallowing in shame or in trying to go the wrong way. And I also learned we can't ruin beyond the reach of redemption. There's nothing so ruined that Christ can't redeem it in our lives. That would be true of the cabinets, and it certainly would be true of anything more important in life than cabinets. And I can't can't always think about wasting time. I have that as a big thing. I always worry that I've wasted time on this. I've wasted time on that. I need to start keeping that sense of wasted time and perspective with the gift of eternal eternal life in Christ, eternity with Jesus. If I'm always in prayerful thought, if I'm always including Christ in my time, if I'm focusing on him, I'm not going to waste a single moment. Nothing's wasted if it's done with Christ, in Christ, for Christ. So if every moment is spent in his company, it's not wasted. And then I also, last and maybe least, proper self-care and rest can prevent those fraying edges. I was in that place emotionally because I am not a big, I break down into tears over every little thing kind of person, but I was exhausted. I was so tired and I needed more rest and I needed to be more aware of my own personal physical limits on doing DIY projects. So um, doing that is, is important. See, God gave us the Sabbath Sunday as a guard. It's a, the Sabbath guards and strengthens our soul. That's why it was his gift to us. Have you ever felt things are too hard in your life? I want to reassure you that the, that the Lord promises to be with you always. Even in those places that are so hard, they seem impossible. He will either equip you to get through it, or he will redirect us to another path if we're trying to force our way into a place that we were never intended to fit. He doesn't promise that we won't go through challenges, and he doesn't promise to rescue us out of all those challenges. If you look in the Bible, you see that the apostles were beaten and tortured and stoned nearly to death and put in prison and in stocks. They didn't live a life free from challenges or suffering. 
and Christ himself went through a life of suffering. It's not the promise that we will never have difficulty in our life, but he does promise to be with us and get us through it. He won't leave us camped out in it to perish there. He's guiding us through to another place. So know that, and I hope that that brings you some encouragement, and I, and I pray that it will give you a sense of hope wherever you are right now today. I look forward to hearing your comments. I'm grateful that you joined me. It's such a blessing to share space with each of you today. And you can check out the rest of the story on my blog at tinayegaro.com if you're interested. And I pray that you'll have a blessed week. I probably won't be blogging for the rest of this week because I'll be at Florida Christian Writers Conference. But I look forward to seeing you again in the following week. Have a wonderful and encouraged and blessed week. Bye-bye. <laughs>